God bless you. You know it's my joy to be always with you. You know, in times like these, our friendship and relationship in Christ really matters. The Word of God tells us that they that bring good news of great joy, we speak peace to their feet. So I am thankful that your prayer is upon me because of what I do as it relates to the kingdom of God and the work of God. I am also very much in prayer for you because if there is ever a time you need God's protection and God's provision, it is now. As we continue to look into the word of God for comfort, for direction, and for consolation, I know that God will continue to provide all of this and more for us. Today I want to boast about the name of Jesus Christ. The Word of God reminds us that God has given us His Son and has given Him a name. Now, the name of Jesus Christ is very, very significant. The angel wanted his parents on earth to know that his name will be about his assignment. So that when the angel appeared to the virgin, and I read Matthew chapter 1 and verse 25, and knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus. I want to read it again for emphasis. And knew her not till she had brought forth her first son and he called his name Jesus. I want to read a little higher up again. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. You realize that the angel's assignment was filled with definition because this child was not going to be any ordinary Jew on the block. This child is God incarnate. So the angel said in the 21st verse of Matthew chapter 1, his name shall be called Emmanuel, thus signifying God is with us. However, he shall live with the name Jesus. We are very, very, very grateful to God that the name Jesus is a name given by God. We are reminded in the word of God in Philippians chapter 2 that God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name and that name is Jesus. The precious name of Jesus, Philippians chapter 1 and verse 9. So the word of God makes it absolutely clear that this name is a name that is greater than any other name that you can find. It's a name better than the name on your paycheck. We are reminded that God has given much significance to this name in that the Lord said that every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. 
verse 10 of that chapter in Philippians chapter 1 and verse and, and verse 10 of chapter 1 says and at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every town shall confess of things in heaven of things on earth and things under the earth that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. So I, I want to encourage you this beautiful day. Don't take this name for granted. You need to call this name. This name is not a swear name. This name is not a by name. This name is not to be used carelessly. Because when you call upon Jesus, earth shakes when you call upon the name of Jesus. As you add Jesus to the various needs of your life, I want you to know that God hears your prayer. Now, you may have said it quite carelessly. Or you may have become so ritualistic that you just say it because it is the norm for saying it. But I got good news for you. As I remind you today, as I emphasize today, that you need to say the name of Jesus Christ with the awareness that this name works for us. In the book of, of Mark's gospel, Mark chapter 16, we are reminded in the word of God that this name Jesus has great power in the, in the name. As we look at the scripture and we, we take cognizance to what Mark was talking about, Mark say, says that the name of Jesus Christ goes with such power that even demons have to subject themselves to this name. That at the name of Jesus Christ, sickness has to submit itself to this name. In the name of Jesus Christ, every authority, every principality has to become subjected to this name. We are also reminded in the word of God as we look at the book of Ephesians and we go to chapter 1 and we look down at the 18th verse of chapter 1. We realize that through this name, eyes can be opened and have enlightenment. People can understand the hope of their calling. People can know the riches of God's glory through this name. In verse 20 in particular, the word of God says, Through Christ, when he raised him from the dead, he set him on high above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and had put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. I'm talking about the name of Jesus Christ. Probably you can just raise your hands right now and just call that name because there is safety. There, there, there are wonders when you call that name. Go right ahead and make mention of that name. I should tell you something about names. Well, I'm glad I can tell you. Your name is utterly more powerful and significant 
than simply the characters that represent it. It represents every transaction you make from banknotes to ownership, business, relationships to paychecks, marriage, authorship, and beyond your name. Now, if your name can be so important on the earth as you live and develop yourself and do business, can you imagine the name of God's son? The name of God's son. That's why the word of God says that when God gave him that name, Jesus, every principality, every power, whether it be thrones, dominions, you name it, all of them have to submit to this name because this is a signature name. You know, one day Jesus had come into the gatherings. This was a venue which had become a, 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 a cemetery. There was a, a man who was there who lived there. And the word of God says this man was a fierce character. He was possessed with legions of spirits. He was filled with a demon. And when those principalities saw Jesus coming into the gatherings, the principality which was there loaded in this man with probably over 3,000 evil spirits, when they saw Jesus, they said, what have we to do with you, Jesus, thou son of the living God? You remember the name, Emmanuel, God is with us. Jesus, the name that brings salvation, the name that saves. And when those principalities recognized Jesus and saw him, they immediately submitted themselves to that name. Not only did they submit themselves to that name, but they came out of that man by the command of Jesus Christ. Those principalities left that man. And you know what the word of God said? The word of God said that that man went home to his family in his right mind. He went home to his family and when they saw him, they later on came out to meet Jesus. Not only them, but all those of the Decapolis where the man lived, the, the community where the man lived. They came out and they received Jesus because Jesus represented deliverance and salvation for that man. Now, I am emphasizing the name of Jesus Christ. I don't want to talk a little bit more about other people and their names. A person's name is the greatest connection in their own identity and individuality. Some might say it is the most important word in the world to that person. It is the one way we can easily get some, someone's attention. When someone remembers your name or remembers our name after a meeting, we feel respected and more important. You know, this is the brilliance about properly naming your children. It is so critical that you properly name your children. Why? Because names affect your life. It is said, there is new research that shows names may even tell us about more than just the social background. A name may affect future decisions about marriage and career. Psychologist Brett Pel Pelham, let me say the name again, Brett Pelham, listen to what he says. 
who has studied hundreds of thousands of names said, listen to what he says, they can significantly affect your life even what profession you enter your name. That's why the name Jesus Christ differentiates itself from every other name. You know, I was listening to uh, um, a, a ministry emphasize a song. Uh, the song is the name of Jesus. Um, Carrie Job and they, they were singing this song. And, and, and I particularly want to confess that I got this message today from this song. Because I, 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 when I heard it, I had to listen to it at least about five times as I sat in my car. Because it was blessing me. That song, amen, a name, a name was just blessing me. And as I listen to the words uh, I felt such an anointed presence came into my car as I was listening to the worship and the lyrics from the song and the, the worshiper said amen that this name this name brings about so many changes and if you will know for yourself and you are willing to just walk into God's presence and really appreciate the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know Jesus himself said it? If you ask the Father for anything in my name, I will give it to you. That's, that's, that's so amazing. It reminds me of my little boy. My son used to do me something when he was a, 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 a very small boy. And I'm talking about, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, around that time. He knowing he's an only child and much love and he had a lot more toys than the children will have and and they will come across because he he was he was blessed in that way um, to have some things that the children enjoyed and he, when the children are there and they're playing um, and and i come around he would add a little more to his to his spoiled behavior and he would say uh, um, daddy and you karen all of us to to the movies and i i would say well well when did i promise that hey, yes daddy and you will carry everybody to the movies and man he would just lock me in a spot and he said daddy carry everybody now because he realized that i'm not most concerned about where he's going with this daddy carry everybody now um, their parents would let them come and so I would call across the, the, the children parents and I would take everybody get them amen planned out and we would go to the movies get them their popcorn and get them their ice cream and the children amen still remember this today that how pastor used to take us out and give us a real fun time but it was only because of trying to satisfy my son now if i can do that being an earthly father and i know there are so many other daddies that are doing this and still doing it today but if we can do this as parents we know how to give good gifts to our children you can imagine almighty god god stands in awe when we speak the name of jesus god is going to respond when we speak the name of jesus god wants us to ask in jesus name so i want you to know today that because of jesus's name the earth shakes chains are broken that's right the man who was at the gatherings the change that he had chain in his life became no more he, he became a free man not because someone humanly had unlocked his chains because the chains the man himself broke away from the chains but he couldn't change himself the power of jesus had to be at work to change him the man himself he could have he could have broken the shackles 
The shackles couldn't have hold him, but the shackles, even though they were broken, didn't give him his freedom. It's not until Jesus came into his life that that man found his freedom. I want you to know today the chains and the shackles that are holding your life and you are not experiencing your peace and your blessings upon your lives, the name of Jesus can change that. So I want to tell you, there is victory in that name. There is victory in the name of Jesus Christ. And I, I want you, amen, to realize that if Jesus can go to the graveside of Mary and Martha's brother, Lazarus, and get there after he is dead four days and tell them that their brother shall live, I want to let you know that no situation that seems as though that has been long gone in your life or your lost dreams, your lost dreams, your lost dreams are not really lost. As long as you can hold on to the name of Jesus Christ and speak those and speak that name. There is resurrection power in that name. That name can change every situation and circumstance in your life. When Jesus spoke, amen, the word of God says, Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth with a loud voice. Can you imagine if Jesus had only said, hey, you that are in the dead, come forth. Can you imagine what a, what a chaotic sight that may have been? Amen. Because all the dead would have come forth. But Jesus named Lazarus. Jesus knows your name. He knows exactly what your needs are. He knows how to train, change the dreaded past, the darkness that you are locked into, and bring you forth so that you can experience the fullness and the blessings of a better life. Hope has a name. Hope Amen. Hope has a name. And the, the name that hope has is Jesus Christ. You know, once someone tell, told me that they are so fed up and so tired of looking for a better day. And, and I said to them, I can understand. Because the word of God says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. But I want to let you know that that too can change. You know, there, there was one woman who had said because of the circumstances and the situations that filled her life that she would have tried several men. And when Jesus met her, Jesus said, I know, I know you well. I'm just, amen, I'm paraphrasing here. You have had five husbands and the one that you are living with now is just a situation. But I want to give to you something that really satisfy. I want to give you hope, amen, that will give you a brand new future. And the woman said to, to Jesus, give it to me. She said, if you are greater than Jacob. Yes, Jacob had a great name. People around you who look like they have some form of promise for your life may look like significant help to you. But I tell you, you have gone on to experience disappointments, but not so with Jesus. When that woman, amen, heard Jesus' words to her, she said, give me that which will satisfy. And Jesus said, what I give you shall be in you as a well of water, springing up as unto life everlasting glory to be to God. Thank God. Come on and give a praise moment now. Amen. That God can give to you the hope and the life that springs up to life everlasting and you do not have to live a hopeless life. In so much that days after this woman, amen, met Jesus again, not by herself, but with a company of people from her village. And that woman said, amen, come see a man. Come see a man who have told me all things that I ever did. I want you to know that hope has a name. That woman got hope. She got a better life. I want to also let you know that joy has a name. Too, too many people are threatened down, 
beaten down. If there is ever a day, amen, that you can not find people who can encourage you. You know, some people, amen, they come and they see everything around you. And what they look for is they look for something negative. You know, you, they didn't even ask you permission, but they tell you, you're too fat. What happened here? And the sun all the time, how oh, you're so black. Amen. Well, you, of course we live in the tropics. You know, some people come, oh my goodness. Hey, uh, everything around you looks pretty well. But remember, you didn't, you didn't see how this thing was looking here. People live with, fi with, 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 with fi uh, fall finding, but not so with Jesus Christ. The Word of God tells us about God and His Word, that though your sins be as scarlet, it shall be made as white as snow. And though they be red as crimson, they shall be made as white as wool. God looks at the negative to give you the positive. While people constantly look at the positive and at the negative and cannot give you the positive. Can I say it again? Why people constantly look at the negative and they cannot give you the positive, but they will not take your willingness, your positive, and try to encourage you that you would do better. Amen. And that your joy will be full. But they look for something where they can take your joy away from complimenting you. But joy has a name. Amen. G Amen. The angels came to meet the shepherds and the angels said, I bring you glad tidings of great joy which shall be unto all people. God wants all people to know that joy has a name. What were the angels sharing with them? The angels were, they were sharing with them Jesus. The angels was giving to them, amen, the, the hope that they needed. Not only the hope that they needed, but the peace that they needed. Peace has a name. You know, Jesus Christ stood in the company of his disciples under tremendous um, persecution. They were after him. And Jesus said to them, in this world, you shall have tribulation. But in me, you shall have peace. Be of a good cheer. In me you shall have peace. Be of a good cheer. I want you to know that peace has a name. And the name of peace is found in Jesus. Jesus said, in me you shall have peace. I want to share further with you. Love has a name. Love has a name. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's right. His name, Jesus. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life peace has a name you are without peace you are worried you are you are fearful amen you you are traumatized you are you are uncomfortable you are distorted you are perplexed but if you take the name of Jesus and you begin to pray the peace of God over your life the peace of God I tell you which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ our Lord yes peace has a has a name it's time for you to start calling upon Jesus amen and recognize that his love is going to come to you. Amen. For God so loved that he gave. I want to share with you that healing has a name. Healing, I, I want to believe God. Amen. For you. Because when the devil says you are out of it, when the devil says that you are not going to be well, you are not going to get better. Amen. And when people are giving up on you, Jesus says, by my stripes, by my stripes, by my name, Jesus stripes, you are healed. Amen. So I want you to know that healing has a name. I have shared this message with you today because I want you to realize that you don't depend on any other people's names, but you depend upon the name of Jesus Christ. This name is important. Why is it important to remember this name? It is important to remember this name because there is no other, no other name under heaven given amongst men why, um, 
a man can be saved or wherefore can a man be saved. And I want to say it again. There is no other name under heaven given amongst men where a man can be saved. You can only be saved. You can only be delivered. You can only be set free. You can only have true, amen, and alive miracles through the name of Jesus Christ. This is the name I introduce to you. And if you receive this name, I speak, I speak victory to you today. I speak hope to you today. I speak joy and peace and love and healing. Why? Because this name gives all of these benefits and blessings. And God's grace be upon you that God is going to give to you a better life because you have chosen this name to live by and to walk in. God bless you. I want to pray for you. I somehow feel that there are those who have listened to me today that need God's salvation. You, you want to get, get saved. In other words, you know, you want to serve the Lord. Like my friend who called me recently and said, how can I self-convert? It was quite an interesting, amen, term, amen, the way he used the statement. And I understood quite clearly because he's not a theologian like I am. And I said to him, what you're talking about? You want to convert to Jesus Christ? And he said, what is that? I said, you want to change your life and serve Jesus? He said, yes. He said, I want to do it. He said, but I was a little shy to ask you to help me. So I wanted to say for me to self-convert. So I led him to Christ. I want to do the same for you. The word of God says, if you will confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So come on, let's, let's say it in unison, but mean it in singleness of heart. It's just simple. Let's go. You ready? I'm glad that you're ready. Say, God, forgive me of my sins. I repent of my sins. Let Jesus Christ be formed in my heart. Let Jesus Christ come and live within me and give me the power and the divine enablement to serve God. Change me and give me a better life. Amen. Now, if you have said that prayer, I pray the apostolic release that God has placed on my life to give to you. I release you. I release you. And I pray you go in freedom. Amen. I want you to get a hold of of a Bible, Bible believing church, get a hold of the Word of God and pray and ask God to direct you. He hears your sincere prayer and He would help you to live a life that is going to serve Him forever and ever. I speak healing to you that are sick, I speak deliverance to you that have been bound. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that God today will give to you victory, hope, joy, peace, victory, and every part of the package that God will supply for you. I pray God's wisdom on our government, God's blessings on our prime minister, God's salvation upon the nation, and that God's deliverance will be with us here in Trinidad and Tobago. And wheresoever your neck of the woods are, that God will provide a shelter for you for healing and protection in this season that we live in. Be at peace. God bless you.